All righty, I think we're going to get started to now. I think I think we got everybody coming in. We'll sure we'll have a few more guests join as we get started, but I want to welcome you all to our virtual Israel program. Like once again, my name is Dan Gold. I work here for, I work here in Los Angeles for the Jewish Federation. This is our second virtual Israel trip. If you some of you who may have been with us in the summer, we did an incredible virtual Israel trip all around Israel, met some incredible Israelis, heard from people of all walks of life, and we really felt like we were back in Israel. And while we're still dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, and only, only in a few months maybe will we be able to go travel to Israel again, we're going to continue our virtual Israel programming. And we have such a great lineup of events, programs on Zoom throughout the spring. Uh, and of course, we're starting off today's uh, program, which is really an incredible and a unique opportunity to learn about some of our partners in Israel, the Federation's partners in Israel, get a taste literally and figuratively of Israeli culture, uh, and hopefully uh, have a great experience all together. Um, before we get started, I just want to quickly thank all the folks that helped make this happen. I want to thank my colleagues over in our Federation's Israel office, Aaron Goldberg and Shira Katz-Winkler, who helped put this together. Uh, of course, we want to thank the tour company uh, IGT, which is the tour company we work with over in Israel when we lead our, our trips and has helped, been helpful in putting this all together. And I also want to thank our great partner here in Los Angeles, World Express Travel. Uh, World Express Travel is our, our, tr our travel agency that helps put everything together. And not only are, are they our partners in, in travel, but their president and CEO, Ori Top, who is with us today, is also a Federation lay leader, has been involved with our work. Um, and we wanted to have Orit help introduce the program. So I want to turn it over to Orit, who's going to give a little bit of an intro, and then we'll get right into the cooking. Thank you, Dan. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because I know people are joining us from all over. Uh, the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles identifies and addresses the greatest challenges, needs, and opportunities facing our community. The pandemic brought us a wave of new challenges and critical needs. In response, we, we devoted quickly and dramatically expanded our work, responding to our already and newly at risk vulnerable population in Los Angeles and Israel, and found creative ways to keep our community engaged. For 2020 and now into 2021, we also have worked to keep our community involved in Jewish life. We offered extensive virtual program for young adults and families with young children and created our first virtual trip to Israel last summer and this experience today as part of our second virtual Israel trip to keep our community connected to our homeland. In Israel, one of the ways we have helped is through our partner Latet. Latet, which means to give in Hebrew, is Israel's national food bank and provides foods for tens of thousands of Israelis who otherwise would struggle to get food. The COVID-19 pandemic has only created more need and worsened the situation for those vulnerable Israelis, which include large population of Holocaust survivors. We are proud to work with Latet and proud to be able to help Israel most vulnerable. Today's the work of Latet, uh, uh, we're proud of the work of Latet and proud to be able to help the most so. Uh, today's program is a great opportunity to learn more about the work of LATET with the help of one of Israel's master chef, Mayor Adoni. Chef Adoni and LATET CEO, Iran Weintraub, will take us on an exclusive journey to create an Israeli Passover meal using the item one might receive from the LATET donation box. Thank you for joining us today and hope you are ready to cook along. Bete Avon and Chag Sameach. Thank you so much, Orit, and of course, thank you for all your help now and before with all of our trips and for our virtual experiences. We, we really appreciate it. So before I turn it over to our, our chef and to Iran, who are we cooking, just a couple of quick housekeeping. We are recording <clears throat> the session today. So for whatever reason you can't stay till the end or you wanna share it with your friends and family, there will be a recording that we will provide shortly. We encourage you to ask questions. Please use the Q&A box um, or the chat box, frankly, if you wanna ask questions. Both Chef Adoni, myself, uh, Iran from Latet will be able to answer questions through the chat box during the cooking. Uh, and then we'll of course be all come back together for a discussion over Zoom uh, where we can ask those questions uh, live as well. And, and finally, I just wanna say we will be sharing a few resources in the chat box as well. We have 
uh, a full recipe and instruction list for the um, for the dishes that will be cooked today. So if you have your ingredients in front of you already and you're ready to cook, that's amazing. If not, we'll provide that list for you so you can watch it again and, and cook your meal for Pesach. And as well as we have resources for this uh, about back, the background information on um, this, this Zoom experience and others to come. So with that, I don't wanna wait any longer. We're gonna get started and I'm gonna go live to Chef Adoni's Kitchen. Hello, dear friends from LA. This is Mayor Adoni directly from Tel Aviv. We're going to do amazing cooking class for you directly from here. And I'm here with, today with Iran, the GM of uh, La Tete organization. And with us also behind the cameras, we have also like the guys from the Jewish Federation of LA. And we're going to do amazing hour with you now, cooking with you, unbelievable food for Passover. So you know, Mayor, that La Tete is um food bank, National Food Bank and an umbrella organization that work together with 180 local uh, NGOs who support more than 70,000 families who live in poverty and food insecurity in Israel. You know, the food that we distribute is based on, first of all, we purchase food uh, which is nutritional. Uh, we sell veg food, we, we have food rescue from the industry which is the main food that we, uh, we have to distribute and we also collect food from the public. So here, uh, I mean, we have our basic uh, uh, basket. On top of it, we have the food that we rescue, and poultry, it's chicken, like and the, fish, which food and- uh, The fresh food is like the, the fresh rescue food. Yeah, it cannot uh, yeah, go inside, the boxes, yeah. inside the box. Uh, so every family, some, it depends, you know, sometimes if, if it's elderly or Holocaust survivors, they will get a little bit different <coughs> components, uh, ingredients. But this is the basic uh, uh, um, basket that we have here. So before Passover, we have also specific things for yeah. Passover, like wine that we have here. What ingredients are we going to use today from the basket? I choose like to use the tuna and uh, of course the matzah flour. And also chicken. We're going to use chicken. We're going to use, of course, oil. And I'm going to use like here, like the carrots and the peas. What about tahini? Uh, the tahini we're going to use, I try to use many uh, products that there is in the box and to show that you can create a, a, a decent meal, even a bit more than decent meal. And this, for me, the box is an easy challenge because there is amazing products there. And you know, we can, do a, we can spoil the people with amazing meal. Very and I think it's, a, it's also a matter of dignity because you know, when, when the needy understand that it's not only you know, the, the basis of the basis, but they can also prepare something which is delicious and nutritional and also fine food that they can, they can feel that, they're, I mean, they're not in, on the side of the uh, society, but we care for them and we are making every effort, every effort we can so they will get uh, the food that will help them to be food secured. The holidays, uh, Rosh Hashanah and, and Passover, there are two holidays that everyone wants to, to have a like, kind of rich table for his kids, even, yes. even if he doesn't have anything to feed them and you help them to give them like something that give them a bit honor to be part of the Jewish holidays. Okay, I think we spoke enough. I, I, my hand is shaking, I want to start to cook, okay? <laughs> let's put everything back to the box and let's start okay. to cook the first dish. Today I choose, especially for you even, I think like to create a menu for Passover of three dishes that I think all of them is kind of my signature of my life. Really? The first one going to be the eggplant carpaccio that is very famous now, even in US. Um, eggplant. And this is something that you used to eat in your... Uh, no, your I used to eat like a, a, a eggplant with a tahini. Okay. You know, it can be almond tahini if you keep like, you don't put sesame, you don't walk with sesame during the Passover, but you can use amazing almond paste. It's like tahini, a regular tahini, but you know, my mother created like, I think, 12 types of salads from eggplant. One of them was the tahini one. And, but this is a signature that we got amazing reviews in New York, and that's going to be the appetizer. Then a second- You meant LA. Ah, LA, <laughs> yeah. No, we are, you know, we're going to talk about that. Maybe someone wants to open with me a restaurant in LA, but we're going to speak about that later. That's going to be the first one, with pistachio and like the tahini and, and, the, and the dates honey, you know, that it's especially like it's Passover and thyme and, and everything, and other stuff that's going to make it very rich, very, and it's 
still very simple. Mm -hmm. The second one going to be another signature dish that it's a, a avocado ravioli. It sounds crazy, but it's so simple. Like we're going to show the technique and we're going to take the, the tuna that you are give in the box and mayonnaise, very simple, a spring onion, a bit like horse, uh, horseradish or like rain, you know, like chazeret, uh, and we create a ravioli with avocado and a little bit like vinaigrette from tomatoes. And the last one going to be a very Moroccan dish, you know, <laughs> in the end, like me. you know, that's my roots. <laughs> uh, and, but I choose still very simple things. It's going to be like minced chicken breast that we're going to do nice chicken patties and with artichoke and fava beans and almonds and root vegetables and cinnamon and barat and all the flavors that I bring directly from my house, from my memories, from the memories from my grandmother. And I think that's going to uh, achieve an amazing meal for the people that uh, we want to donate them happiness and amazing uh, meal to Passover evening. Sounds great. Let's start, huh? Let's do it. Okay. We have here, of course, eggplant carpaccio. We have to have eggplant. And in Israel, you know, we, I think we, we uh, create a trend around the world that the way you treat eggplant is to burn them mm -hmm. on an open flame. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to take pieces from the eggplant. I already peeled it. You know, you burn it slowly, slowly around on open flame. If you don't have an open flame, you can do it like in an oven or on a grill. But the best one is the open flame. It gives very smokiness flavor to the eggplant. Exactly. You take pieces and you create a carpaccio from the eggplant. I'm ready. Okay. And then we have here like roasted pistachio. That it's roasted and crushed uh, pistachio. We have like fresh thyme leaves. It should be very thin or? No, that's, that's the, yeah, we have, I want to feel like a bit uh, uh, the texture of the, of the flesh of the eggplant, mm -hmm. that, that you don't crush it too much. But you create uh, in a, a free hand mm -hmm. your own way of, you know, carpaccio. In the end, carpaccio is Italian dish that, you know, usually from beef or like fish. And here we create that a Middle Eastern Israeli dish from eggplant. During this year, I mean, uh, the rate of poverty got really high. I mean, uh, we had a very uh, wide research in our alternative poverty report mm -hmm. that showed that more than 420. Yes, continue, yeah. Okay, let's do it together. I'll try yeah. to be. I, I'm a man, but yeah. maybe I'll try, to, try to do uh, two things. Together, yeah. yeah. So uh, more than 420,000 uh, families who deteriorated to uh, um, financial distress, and mm -hmm. more than 268,000 families who deteriorated to poverty. I mean, more than a quarter of a million families who deteriorated to poverty. I mean, this is uh, unacceptable. Even uh, about 143,000 families deteriorated to, to be uh, food insecure. And that, this means, you know, we uh, at LATET and also in the civil society uh, want to be, you know, the, the first responders in, in, in terms of, of society. Uh, but our challenge was so high, and, and unfortunately, the government wasn't there. So it was based only on civilians, and you know, our budget at LATET is based on the Israeli society, on the, on the public, some also, of course, uh, uh, philanthropic foundations. The great uh, uh, LA Federation helps us a lot, and many other uh, uh, foundations. And because we succeeded to have like a coalition of a big help, we were able to address all those families. You know, food uh, is, uh, I mean, food insecurity, sometimes uh, you treat it as uh, very flexible uh, expenses because nobody tells you how much food to buy. Uh, so many families don't have the money to buy uh, uh, what they need. And this is why we need uh, to help them. We have I mean, all the people who were poor before the outbreak, their condition deteriorated, I mean, very bad because they were a lot at home and they needed to uh, yeah, bring food. You eat Did more, you? yeah, of course. There is a, I mean, a lockdown, the food, the, the education system is closed. There is the holidays. Uh, you have, uh, you know, the summer vacation, all these periods of time, the families were at home. And what you did, like emergency steps, but what, what, how you create 
where you brought the budget to, to handle yeah, all so, this. Uh, we launched uh, and founded uh, uh, a Corona uh, Foundation for COVID only. And we located all those families, first of all, through our infrastructure. We, 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 as, we as a food, National Food Bank and Umbrella Organization work together with a lot of local agencies. Mm -hmm. And more than that, we succeeded to locate more than 12,000 new families. I mean, wow. from this aisle, wow. four to seven, from middle class, who deteriorated to, to, uh, to financial distress. Uh, and they were seeking for help for the first time in their lives. Okay, I think let's finish the first one and continue to talk about the amazing things that we are doing. We uh, make the carpaccio shape of the eggplant now very simple. We take, we're going to season that first of all with salt. It's going to be a very simple salt. We don't need any fancy salt. And, and you don't mind have this black uh, part? No, of the, I'm crazy about them. Crazy yeah, about this them? kind of tiny circle of the skin of the eggplant gives you a kick of uh, smokiness when you take the bite. Um, and then a little bit like crushed black pepper. I like to be generous, you know, I like that the food is kicking your palate, you know, it's not shy. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now, you know, we're using tahini, it can be from sesame, it can be from almonds. We're going to drizzle the tahini on the carpaccio. You know, I like to do spiral, but everyone can play, you know, give even to the kids to do it. It's like very fun thing to do with the family together and the tahini with the eggplant going to create kind of smokiness of halva, you right. know, the Turkish candy. And, and it's like, I like to drizzle very generous. And then of course, we have like the dates honey that it's like symbolic thing from to, uh, to Passover. And then you can also I'll, I'll create, excited. yeah. Do, Try not to ruin what you did. No, do it like freestyle. We don't want that too sweet. We don't be like too generous like with the tahini a little bit less exactly this like fine uh, spots like lines of the uh, silan of the day the dates honey is make it great and then after a that more? a little bit more yeah exactly great and the sweetness and the tahini and the eggplant as we say give you that the halva flavor then we're going to spread i like to some spice now yeah exactly i put now the coriander seeds, I like even like only to crush them a bit. You know, I think you're going to do it better than me. <laughs> crush them in the hand a little bit even more with your strong hand. And uh, during that, I also like spread the fresh thyme that's coming amazing with the eggplant and the tahini and the halva and the, um, and the silan, sorry. I have halva in my mind all the time because you're going to see it's a very, the influence of that dish is very Turkish. You know, you're going to get a lot of Turkish flavors with it this, amazing, uh, uh, with the eggplant. In your hands, with yeah. your hands. With the thyme and the coriander seeds. And I want to say people that don't like cilantro or coriander, fresh uh, coriander, it depends where you are in the world. Sometimes you call it like coriander, sometimes it's cilantro. The coriander seeds have different flavor. Don't be afraid to, to, to spread them. It's completely not like the cilantro or like the fresh coriander. And the thyme, I like also to be generous. And see how simple is that, but more like kind of fancy. And we're going to no not no. In the end, in the end, we're going to put olive oil. And you, yeah, Middle East, you have to have olive you have oil. To with yeah, this one. but now now we have the pistachio that make it rich, you know, and give a, another bite that take you a bit to a Turkish or to our region. And I spread also again a wow. uh, wine, nice amount of pistachio but you can use also almonds or pine nuts or whatever you have and you know you don't have to stick to that and it feels like a holiday I mean, yeah and now we're going to make it happy with this rose dry rose flowers and again if you don't have it it's okay you can take even from the garden nice fresh flowers of course eatable and spread them but here in israel we can find these rose and flowers and we you know that, that my grandfather and mother used to have them i mean with smell in their uh, garden but yeah. today it's very rare to find yeah i mean ones, uh, yeah, you can, exactly. they, they used to make also jelly from it and you know amazing turkish one this is all those the, the egypt and syria okay but uh, okay see that plate
you know, the major things is eggplant. Mm -hmm. And the tahini that we send in the box, and the silan that we send in the box, you know, and so, and, and you create something that you put it in the center of the table of the Passover, you know, evening, and it's amazing. It and then, and in the end, <laughs> of course, like the olive oil, that this is one of the signature of the Middle East in Israel, of course, and very generous again. And that's it. We have eggplant carpaccio ready for the Passover table from La organization, La Tet organization and the uh, Jewish Federation of okay. LA. And listen, that's the first one, huh? Amazing. Okay, guys, we're done with the eggplant carpaccio. I want to remind all of you, in the end of the class, I will be here for you to answer any question. Okay, we're done with the appetizer, the eggplant carpaccio, we're going to put it on the side in a second. Tell me, how many boxes like that are you going to send this Passover? You know, Mayor, we are an umbrella organization and a national food bank. And on regular days, we uh, support 60,000 families through our infrastructure. And because of COVID, uh, it became more than 72,000 families for, uh, from all the sectors in the Israeli society, by the way. I mean, we have secular, religious, non-orthodox, um, uh, Arabs, Bedouin, everybody, because one of our basic uh, values is to work equally on a universal basis. We support everybody in need. I think that's really important. Okay, let's move to the second one. I put that on the side and we're going to move to another signature dish. I think the first time I did it, it was like 20 years ago. Uh, I came back from New York. I saw something closer to that and I create my own dish. And today I want to honor our partners in LA, the ones that support us and let us build these boxes, you know, and set it all over Israel with this signature dish, the avocado ravioli. Okay, let's start, you know. We, you know, usually I can talk and talk and talk, but we have short time to cook a meal, you know, and to sit with the family. The holiday is coming. And it, okay, we must what be I'm in hurry. We need to choose, I don't, usually, you know, it's like, it's like going to be surprised if the avocado is amazing from inside or not. When I create that dish, I'm buying like a few spurs, but you don't need too much. Uh, and but I, you know, if it's uh, even if it's ugly, uh, yeah, fruits you and vegetables, exactly. you can you can uh, work with them because we want also not to, you know, to uh, to throw food. We want to rescue everything we can. I cut that. It looks nice enough, you know. And what I want you now to peel it. And what we're going to do? We're going to stuff this avocado after that in a special way. But now, what I want from you is to peel these two cuts and then we can continue. Uh, I do the filling now, and it's very simple one. You know what I want before you peel them? I want you to take one of the tuna, tuna cans box from there, and, and I will do from the box, exactly. Open it for you, chef. Yeah, open it. Great, you are an amazing sous chef, you know? <laughs> Let me, I will, pour, I will pour the oil there. Thank you very much. Okay, tuna, it's amazing, it isn't, you know, most of us was raised on tuna Protein. from, yeah, and also from tuna from can, you know, you don't, you don't need to eat. You know, Just put I, it here on the plate? Yeah, put it here, it's like going to be the mise en place, and then we're going to create the, um, the ravioli, and I put the tuna here, and we're going actually to create a very simple tuna salad, mm -hmm. you know, everyone of us knows, you know, the tuna salad, you can eat like in sandwich, you can eat like in a breakfast of the Israeli breakfast as a tiny salad next to other stuff. And I create this one, um, especially to be the stuffing of the ravioli inside the avocado. And I season like the tuna with a, a little bit of mayonnaise or even Another a little. Or no, I think this is enough. This one, yeah, well, we're going, to use, we're going to use the, the, most, the one that is a bit more pretty. Mm -hmm. And the one that is not so nice, we're going to cut and put inside. We don't throw anything. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut this one and put it inside the salad. Great. And I put the mayonnaise, you see, I season the tuna with mayo and a little bit spring on it that coming very nice with the tuna. And very simple, salt and black pepper. You know, I don't, yeah, I, I like. Some uh, lemon? Actually, I don't want because I don't like lemony 
flavor with the avocado. Mm -hmm. It changed completely the flavor of the avocado. You know, and I think the mayo, the spring, the salt, going to do amazing work here. And we get very simple, see, like a tuna salad. Mm -hmm. That's it, it's ready. And I think what is really important now is the technique, the way that we are creating uh, the ravioli. I take the, you know, the avocado, doesn't matter if it's shaped, like, you know, you, it, the shape, the regular shape of the avocado is great. You know, you can peel it like that. You take it with, out from, with the spoon, each one in the way that you like to peel the avocado. I take the edge out and I cut a little bit from the bottom because it's too high like that. And what I'm going to do now is to slice it, you know, like that slowly, no rush. Doesn't matter if you have like things like that. Okay, the avocado, we cut the avocado, okay? And we are going to like freehand cut a, bit, cut a bit from the leftovers because we are not throwing food you know, and also we can do like for other dish, cream from that or keep it for breakfast, you know, whatever, you know, you don't throw food, you know, even I came from, you know, a, a, a house that food is like uh, all the time generously on the table, but I also learned that you don't throw food and especially also as a chef, I train my cooks not to throw anything, right. not to throw anything, even there we're going to see I make a stock from the skin of the onion and the celery and the carrot. You don't throw anything. Amazing. And then... Important, very important. We take... The, the stuffing is ready. What I like, especially for Passover also, we have here the chrein. Okay. Before the chrein, we're going to use... You're going to season with a little bit salt the inside of the avocado that slice very fine. And then we put a little bit black pepper. And then we're going to put a little bit you know, from the grain, and we spread it like that nicely. Instead of schug. Instead of schug, yeah, or yeah. other stuff. Eran, tell me, like, you're doing so many projects in La Tête, but what is the real project that really makes you proud, you know, like... One like, of the programs that really uh, make me excited and emotional is our uh, program for helping needy Holocaust survivors, those who build this country, uh, our uh, grandmother and grandfathers that are spending their few years that they left uh, with no dignity and this is something that we try to uh, uh, ease and be there for them. Okay, we have the avocado sliced, we have the grain, salt and pepper. Now we take the stuffing and it can be, you know, other stuff, you know, for the people in LA, if you want to choose something else, it's great. I choose tuna, avocado and tuna, it's, like combina it's a classic combination, and we have it in the box. It was so uh, clear. clear to me that it's have to be that dish. Um, I put a small bowl like that. Again, it's like a second appetizer. And what we're doing now, we're going to cut the nail on wrap and we take the edge from the sides and the other one and I like start slowly slowly to bring it together and now I take it like that and with the hand it's like plastelina and or fimo or whatever you know and and you create slowly slowly a ball from the avocado and the tuna inside and it's only avocado and tuna you know, and you get slowly and you see a little bit from the pink from the grain and I keep it like that. You can do that few hours before the meal. And you put it in the fridge? In the fridge, keep it in the fridge and now I shape it again a little bit more. And this is another signature. When I opened my first restaurant, Katit, that was one of the first dishes there. And as we say, we honored that to our partners in LA uh, for this Passover. This, this one will be at here, and now we create the things that coming around that. Very simple again, I try to keep everything 
You know, for me, I'm, I'm one of the most complicated chefs in Israel. <laughs> I have like... 30, you like to use yeah, many 30, ingredients. 30, at least like minimum 30 items in, yeah. inside the one dish. But here I say, try to clean a bit. <laughs> and, and what I want to do for that one is to create a very, very simple uh, tomato vinaigrette. And I choose again, something that everyone can buy, everything, you know, it's not expensive. And also from culinary ways, it's simple to do it at home. And it's like tomato juice, you know, that mm -hmm. you buy in cans. Mm -hmm. And we put a little bit from that, not a little bit, but we're going to have the, you're going to get the exactly recipes for that. And olive oil. And also a little bit generous, you know, again. And also it's going to create the creaminess of the vinaigrette. One garlic, cloves inside, of course, peeled, and salt and pepper. Then you can take it to the blender and blend it. Okay, Ron, let's bring the vinaigrette here. Yeah, pour it here and we can put the blender on the side. It's ready it's for like it. Moroccan, uh... Yeah, but you see, we give it like, a, it's give it like the oil, give it like a body. And of course, season that. And now again, we say we keep it simple today as we take um, the plate. Okay, very simple to plate it. Uh, you know, I think Passover, big family around the table. The mother usually she's cooking, but she wants also to, to you know, to to uh, to enjoy the, the the dinner. You know, and usually you know in Moroccan house the mother is in the kitchen sending food, sending food, but you don't see her around the table. And I said no, that's it. You know, the mother have to be there. And we I created the dishes that also the carpaccio that we did before. And this one you can make a mise en place before like all the preparation and then you can sit with the people when you plate it and because i keep the plate very simple we're going to put on the bottom the vinaigrette you know freehand it doesn't need to be like completely full with that but nicely generous and then we take the um the avocado and slowly open the nail on that all of all of you was the very uh, attend attention like attends because the the, the nail on and then we take it and it's keeping the it's keeping the, the shape. shape. And what I want before I put it on the plate is to season that with a little bit salt. Because avocado have to have salt. And even on the board with a little bit olive oil. And put it in the center of the plate. And then again a little bit more olive oil. and drizzle, like make like a kind of, we call it like broken vinaigrette because you see like a little bit oil flow on, on the surface of the thing. And that's it, you know, we have a little bit cilantro that I want to make nice um, small cuts with that. And if you don't like cilantro, you can use parsley or basil or whatever. And to spread that above and around and very simple dish that I think I try to do things today that everyone can create at home from the economic side and from the uh, culinary side. It was very important to me to see how we can use the stuffing that you have, like the products that you have in the box and still to create a fine dish that can, you know, like be very enough fancy to a uh, Passover. And really, you see, it looks like very complicated, but in the end, when you see the technique, it's so easy. I can't wait to our holiday meal to, to make this. So. We're going to see it with the matzah and a, a glass of wine in the end of, of the session. Avocado ravioli, it looks complicated, but it's very simple. But still, if you have questions, I'm here for you in the end of the session. Tell me, you are like the biggest bank food in Israel. How this organization is works, you know, it's like huge logistics and foundations and to find the families that needs to get these boxes. So we spread all over the country. I mean, we have three logistical centers working together with uh, 180 local agencies and supporting now after COVID about 72,000 families. Uh, we based our uh, infrastructure on food rescue 
And this model is very efficient. I mean, every dollar you invest in the operation, we succeed to distribute food nine times worth. Wow. So uh, you also protect the environment, it, uh, you help people, and it's very efficient also in economic uh, figures. I wish the rest my restaurant was working in this efficient, you know, like <laughs> 10 times more. Yeah. Okay, now we are in the main course, the chicken patties, and we start with the chicken that we mince twice, and the protein there, when you mince it twice, it's like stronger, and it's make you the glue for the, for the, for the patties. And now you take... But it's not to uh, make it too... Uh, stiff. Too no, because we're going to use uh, egg inside and the matzah flour. Mm. It's going to be, they give us the nice texture. And also, I will start to sweat chopped onion, chopped celery, and chopped carrot. I'm going to sweat them in oil, mm. and then we let it cool it a bit, and then we mix it with the raw chicken, and we create them together, and it gives you like juice, and also, of course, the all... The also make it very uh, soft, the onion inside. Uh, yeah, exactly, the onion, and also the juice from the carrot and the celery. I like, when I do chicken, to put all these three, again, from my mother, from my grandmother, that's the way we do it. You start to put the meat here, use only half of that, mm -hmm. and then you can chop, we have here cilantro, coriander, and uh, parsley. Okay, you can chop them uh, half and half and can put I, it... Can I use your knife, chef? Of course. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have the honor that you're going to use that. Chop it very fine. It goes well? Uh, yeah, you, you gave me a lot of work here, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, then you go in. When you, when you think it's ready, we transfer it to the chicken. I will pass around you. And, okay, now what I'm going to season, it's It should like, be very uh, chopped, I mean... Yeah, roughly chopped, you know? It's like we're doing like a, a mama, a grandmother food. It doesn't need to be like completely fine. Um, I season the chicken also. I like very much cinnamon uh, with the chicken. I season that very generous with the cinnamon. But it's very dominant. No? I know. I like it. But with chicken, I'm crazy about the cinnamon. Uh, I think it's very aromatic and even like, you know, uh, um, fit to me to, to, to holidays. You know, it's, it's a sweet spice, cinnamon. And it's like, uh, because it's a chicken and if it was... I was put a little bit even sometimes I'm not putting cinnamon but with chicken it's like flavor the chicken very nice mm -hmm. and make it like very uh, uh, happy uh, dish you know and then I put a little bit baharat you know the mix the, the spice the mixed spices that called baharat and I like it very much it's the same family no the same family exactly you can find it like in the Arabic cuisine Moroccan cuisine uh, Lebanon is cuisine, you know, that's the thing that it's a lot of influence that we're getting in Israel. And also, you know, my mother came from there, my, of course, my grandmother came from there, and I, it's, that's the food I was raised as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. in the holidays. And I put a little bit flecks of chili or shatta, you know, whatever, but a little bit spice, uh, spiciness inside. Not to be, make it very hot, but very spicy, but a little bit, a small kick. Uh, of spiciness, uh, spicy uh, inside, and I like also garlic, fresh garlic, not too much, it's too strong if it's too much inside there also. And again, I use also a little bit coriander seeds that I don't like them crashed too much or even like completely uh, as a powder. And I like to only break them and put it like that. You can toss them before that in a, in a clean pan to open you know, the flavor, but I like it like that, and it's give the bite inside uh, the chicken patties after that. And also, again, something that is not usual, a little bit from the silan, give a little bit sweetness to the, to the patties, the chicken patties, and you can put your hair, oh, it's amazing, listen, <laughs> it's amazing. I know I choose the best sous chef for this job. You can put it there, and I will bring in a second also like the, uh, the 
root vegetable that we sweat. I like to season also with a little bit thyme. It gives something between the cilantro and the parsley, something that is a bit different. Uh, that's my version of my grandmother uh, patties. And that's ready. Now, one to this amount of chicken, we can use one egg that you're going to broke up, bring you a plate and broke the egg here inside and then you can put it there. And I will take for, for you, I look for, yeah, the box, uh, matzah flour. That's, you know, that's the only flour that we uh, can work in uh, Passover. Not the only one, you have also the potatoes flour, but it's a completely different thing. And this one will make the, uh, the patties very flappy, you know, with the egg. You can break one egg here inside here, a whole egg. Yeah. And we put a flour like that. I like to be generous with that. It gives us like very nice texture. Here? Yeah, inside. And now we have the fresh herbs that you chopped. We have the egg, we have the uh, matzah flour. And now I'm going to bring the root vegetable that I sweat. It's already cooled down. I put it in the fridge. I put it and then we mix it and we continue with the dish. Okay, that's the vegetable. That's the way they look after the sweat. And I Shine. put, yeah, you know, I like to make it like a little bit under uh, al dente, a little bit, and still give them a still that you have the body of the vegetable, but not completely uh, too uh, hard, because usually you can find even chefs that put it like raw to, the, to sweat a bit, to make it more soft, and I think also open better the flavor of the vegetable. When you cook it, it becomes uh, softer, I mean. Yeah, but you get also the sugar and the flavor stronger. You know, you take the water out from the vegetable. But you know, each chef with his own scratch. You know, that's what we say. Okay. You know, May, I'm so excited by doing it with you because I understand that also people who are needy that watching uh, and can use these recipes, I mean, to, to use the, what we have in the box and have like a chef um, a, a meal of, you know, a very, it's also very healthy and it it's, looks like it's delicious. And, and when you understand that you can make something which is not like only the basis, I mean, you feel maybe more dignity and more happy that uh, you can uh, do something for your family, especially before the holidays. And it looks like so, so nice. Very fancy and rich and from simple things. And listen, this one also, you know, it's like in the past, you know, in Morocco, my grandmother or the, or the, the mother of my grandmother was Safta Raba, you know, she was like cooking very simple things, you know, they was living in a very uh, humble, and uh, uh, not rich, uh, 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 you know, life. And she was need to feed so many kids and grandchildren. And, all must, I mean, and you have to cook people. from a very basic things yeah. and make it fancy for the holidays. And I think that's what we are doing here today. Uh, and if you use creativity and also tips from a fine chef and also put some love. Love, I think that's the, so. the best spice, spice inside the, the food. Okay, I think we can put another egg inside here. And also I want to season that not with olive oil, with the regular oil. I give, because the breast of the chicken is very low in fat, uh, I want to put a little bit oil also that gives us a bit a, a fatness inside, not be too dry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, you can take the um, Teflon pan there. You can put uh, the pan there and we're going to sear first uh, the patties on the pan and then we start to create the, the stew that the patties go inside. Mm -hmm. You know, like the artichoke, the garlic, the fava beans that's standing here. You know, usually I do it by hands. You know what, Iran? Do it by hands. I have amazing sous chef. You know, you can mix it. Where do, where do I put the patties? No, let's, first of all, let's, let's mix it well and see that we get the right texture. I can feel it by the hand mm -hmm. that we, it's not too stiff, you know? And yeah, mix, mix the egg together like nicely. You see that it's really uh, mixed well. And then I will warm up the pan here. I put a little bit, I drizzle a little bit olive oil on the pan. How, how it feel like it's stiff? Uh, it's stiff. It's stiff, okay. Let's, I put a little bit more from the oil because it's open. Again, it's yeah. only chicken breast. 
No, it's not that the leg that there is fat. I put a little bit more and mix it again. We're going to use more eggs. Uh, no, the eggs make it like a bit more. Um, it's like glue. And I don't need the glue because it's a lot of protein. We don't need so much eggs inside. Let's do one test. You know, usually when I'm doing uh, uh, patties, we do one test and then we fix it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, the best things to uh, make these patties is with oil because it's like a low fat uh, patties. I use oil when it's very fat patties. Like if you use like veal or very fatty cow, you use wa you use water. Okay, but let's like. Again, like the grandmothers, we put a little bit of oil on the hands and then you take, the, you know, the, the, the measure, like what you think it's going to be a nice uh, amount of patty. And you see, you get the sh you make it very quick with the shape. You can put it back here. It will not stick to the pan and continue like that until we have a full pan. From both of the sides, we finish to cook that inside the stew that we start in a second. Mm -hmm. I'm start to sear them on the pan, okay? You can continue a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to start the stew. We take like the onions. We have here already peeled onions. You can chop them really roughly. And I will uh, um, start to put uh, olive oil on the casserole. Again, you can be generous with the olive oil. We are joking all the time about Moroccan cuisine that it's like everything is confit. Huh? It's like covered with oil. No, but here we do it like a bit more uh, easy with that. Yeah, that's it. And then I will start very quickly with the whole, like very generous uh, hand of full with garlic. Mm -hmm. And I leave it whole because if I chop it, it will burn very quickly. And I like it also after we're going to finish to cook the stew, it's going to be very smooth, you know, like garlic and not the one that's burned when you chop it very... Uh, I open the garlic, you know, I open the oil with the garlic and I wait to the onion. You can bring it when it's ready. One minute, chef. Yeah, roughly free and don't be, doesn't need to be uh, accurate like, like a restaurant. That's what, you know, that's what I like when I cook also for my kids at home. It's like when you cook free, you put your soul inside. You don't. You're need saying, I, yeah, I'm when you do it. In your restaurant, yeah, no, when no, but when. It, <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, I have ah. another destiny, but it's okay. Completely. I think you do something that is bigger sometimes than a restaurant. Okay, put it, put it to the casserole. Also, it doesn't need to be really caramelized, only to make it sweat, uh, and then we continue with the artichoke and the other stuff. Put it now inside. And again, it's like, a, we call it like mama, you know, like the grandmother's cooking, no really rules. Again, I try to use, you know, very simple things that everyone can afford himself or almost everyone can afford himself to buy. And it's like, I use like here, like a frozen artichokes, uh, you know, Passover for me. It's the time of the artichokes, it's the time of the green almonds, it's the time of the green garlic, it's the spring. And I put this artichoke now inside. I caramelize them again also with the onion a bit. Take the water outside. Usually, you know, like all the vegetables have a lot of water inside. We want to reduce the water and give like the sugar and the flavor to be stronger inside the vegetable. And what I have also here is the almonds, fresh almonds. I will soak them in water and then I take in hot water, then I take the skin out and, and that's complete, I mean, completely like it. I don't like, I like it, like complete inside. I put them now with the artichokes. I like also to caramelize them a bit. Aaron, can you bring the salt and pepper and we're going to season, season now the, the stew here. This is your job. <laughs> Again, that's great. And now if you can take one lemon, before you squeeze the lemon, make me zest of the lemon and then squeeze the juice and bring me that together. I use the skin, the zest and the juice together inside the stew.
Usually you do it for cakes, no? Not only, I, I'm crazy about that, you know, it gives you like a bit bitterness, mm -hmm. a lot of flavor, like different flavor from the juice, you it's know? The whole lemon. Yeah, the whole lemon. Mm -hmm. You are cheap on me? Yeah, I think that's enough. Then you squeeze like freehand the lemon juice also inside the, the jar, the plate. No, the whole lemon. You know, again, like all the greens, the artichoke, even the, the uh, Chicken patties, they like the sourness. I think that's the flavors of, of the spring. You know, the greens, the garlic, uh, uh, the lemony, the sourness inside the food. Yeah, you can put it inside there. And now, we spoke about that before. I make like a, a little bit stock from the, from the uh, skin of the carrot, of the, of the onion, of the celery. And I only pour a little bit from that in a free hand, These like, not I'm not throwing anything, anything, anything. That's the jus, that's the, the stock for, for, for this uh, stew. I let it a little bit work like that to braise, to braise the vegetables. And during the braising, I will put the chicken patties that we already seared above that. And it will be steamed a bit and cooked inside. Now we're ready for the fava beans. It's like another two minutes is ready. I want to take the fava beans, again, frozen one. Oh, it's frozen? Yeah, we took the skin out. You don't need to cook it. You don't only defrost. Take the skin out and it's amazing, you know? And it's one third of the price of fresh one, mm -hmm. okay? Then we're going to spread, to spread them above again to get the heat from above. And what I want now is the cilantro and the parsley, the fresh one also. Not all of that we keep for the end, but most of that inside the pot here, give the flavor, the fresh flavor of the green, of the spring, of Passover. Also cilantro, you don't have to, only if you like. You can put also mint, you can put sage, you can play with that. Karen, that's the way our casserole, our pot looks in the end. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's grandmother. That's the way it looks, you know. Big pots, flat one, um, with, with, with everything, with the lemony, with the spring. It feels like home. And now, you know, we, we can keep it like that or we can transfer it like slowly to a, a, another pan, clean that we want to serve to the table. And I like, you know, to make it a bit mess, to play with the vegetable and the patties and, 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 you know, and to build something that will come. You know, of course, all it is for us, it's a family style. You know, all the food is in the center and people sharing and, you know, I think it's part of the way to show love and to, you know, and to share food together. And this is why to be food secure is so important. To understand that, you know, there's more than 650,000 people in Israel that are not food secured. And among them, almost 400,000 children who are living severe food insecurity. So when you hear these numbers, you understand that uh, we must do something for them. And if no, people yeah, are yeah. able to do something like that, so it's, it's great. And the numbers that you said are crazy numbers. You know, I, I never believed that it's so many people in Israel that are living like that. We are one of the poorest countries uh, in the OECD. People cannot believe this, but you know, um, it's all relayed on, on the action of the civil society, on NGOs, food banks, and so on. So, uh, and, and I mean, this is a, a part of our uh, mission to, uh, to bring love and food on the table. And thanks to uh, partners like uh, the Jewish Federation of uh, Greater LA, we are able to do this all around the year and also especially before the holidays.
I think, uh, you know, I know that Jewish around the world that support Israel and support organizations like yours so much. And also now to hear that also LA is part of that. It's warmed the heart. I finished. You know, also when we also, we used to work in regular days, but in time of, of emergen emergency, yeah, like that, like the COVID time. Yeah, like COVID. I mean, uh, we, uh, and even though, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, the, the, uh, the core uh, of what they were doing in, in LA, they just said, we are side by side with you, and we are, we are with you in, in, a, in an amazing partnership in regular days and also in emergency days. Thank you. Thank you, LA, for all of that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Again, we, we, we say spring, we finish with uh, oranges, uh, uh, lemon zest. We finish with lemon zest again and a little bit drizzled of olive oil. And that's, that's Passover. Very generous, very, uh, you know, like a dish that makes you full and warm. This is like a comfort food, you know, like grandmother's comfort food that uh, make you full but also make you happy, especially for Passover. Uh, and especially for holidays. Okay, friends in LA, we are done with the dinner for the Passover and I hope all of you make an amazing job there uh, in LA. We start with the eggplant carpaccio and we move to the uh, avocado ravioli. We're done with the patties of the chicken with the artichoke and the fava beans. And I hope all of you smile from happiness and uh, I wish all of us the best. And now Iran wants to say a few words to all of you there. In First of all, I would have never believed that uh, you can make something like this from the ingredients that we have in the box. So thank you so much, man. Oh, it was a privilege for, for me. Uh, nice, very amazing uh, experience. Uh, I felt your love, not only in the cooking, but also uh, in what we are doing together. And I would like also to thank you there in LA, our friends, our partners, uh, we appreciate so much what you are doing for us, and we, be we believe and we feel that we are doing it together for the people in Israel who live in uh, poverty and food insecurity. And together we are enabling them also to have uh, a decent, delicious, and uh, nutritional uh, meal for Passover, also for other days, in uh, regular days, and in uh, emergency like COVID. We hope to see you in Israel next year, I would like to wish all of you there in LA from the family of Latet good health, uh, happy Passover, and may uh, our partnership grow together for the people in Israel. Chag uh, Sameach v'lechaim. Chag Sameach v'lechaim. And I think from all of us, I want to, to send you know, to big hug and thank you. Huge thank you for you that you are donated to Israel and to Latet. And thank you very much. We appreciate that. Nechaim, happy Passover. Friends, I'm here for you now. We've done the session, we've done the cooking class. I'm here to answer the question that you have. Any question, send to me and I will answer. Thank you all for watching and thank you, of course, to Chef Adoni. <laughs> who's joining us now live from his home and while Iran is also going to be joining us. First and foremost, we're going to take a quick moment of break from the cooking. We want to wish Chef Adonia Mazal Tov on the birth of your new son. If I'm not mistaken, you had the, you had the bris today or maybe very soon. So we appreciate you making time. Uh, so let's, let's start there. Uh, I know lots of our participants have questions. We were joking before. What, what, what keeps you up more, a new baby or a new restaurant? <laughs> I think that new baby, you know, is a bit more than a new restaurant. <laughs> uh, uh, even it's like the seventh one. Uh, but yeah, it's still, it's really excited and really, uh, you know, you work hard for this kid. Well, yeah, so Mazalto from all of us in Los Angeles, thank we you. thank you so much. I see Iran is on as well. Chef Adoni, I just want to start by saying, you know, you, 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 you really put effort to use the items in the box, the items that people are getting. Um, when they get a when they get a food delivery from Latet, can you can you tell us a little bit about that process? Was it challenging? Was it not so challenging? What what did you think about when you first kind of looked at all those items? I think every meal is a challenge, you know, for every chef, <clears throat> and especially when you are usually doing like a fine dining food, like you know, food that sometimes can be even like a Michelin star food. Uh, but I think 
in the end of the day, even it's my home or my mother home, in the end, all of us cooking basic. And I think the box is amazing. Uh, someone there uh, was thinking how we build a, a generous, a reasonable uh, Passover uh, meal with that. And for me, it was like to go to, you know, to take the, the things that I know that there is in the box and, you know, to take from my memory and, and even for my, you know, like my memories from my, my Passovers as a kid or during the years and to create dishes that few of them signature of my restaurant in, in a simple way. And, and few of them like the, the, the patties is like coming directly from my memories as Passover in my grandmother's house. Great. I, I'm going to get to a few things about Latet, but we did have a bunch of people that were cooking along and were asking questions and we, we tried to do our best, but a couple of questions about replacement ingredients. People wanted to know, I'll, I'll list off the three and you tell me what your thought is on replacement. First with the date honey, if regular honey or other could be replaced. Second would be if they can use fish or other food, if people don't eat chicken. And then if there's a replacement, this one, I don't know if there's a gluten-free replacement for matzo flour. Okay, uh, slowly, slowly, yeah. You can use like every sweet honey that you want. You know, it can be a regular honey. It can be like, you know, um, uh, agava. It can be whatever is kosher for Passover and you like it. But I think Ceylon today, especially in LA, you can find everywhere. Um, that's the first thing. The second one, uh, if we can replace the chicken with a fish, yeah, you can take like a fish and make like the same way uh, 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 fish patties. Um, with the same ingredients completely, you know, and you get like a really good uh, fish patties. Um, and what we have more that you said, like yeah, fruit, uh, gluten free. Glu yeah. yeah, usually you can use, you can try to put inside the cooked quinoa, you know, that quinoa is also like a kosher for Passover. Uh, or you can use uh, 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 potatoes. You can take potatoes, you grate them in a grater, you squeeze the water, and you put them inside the chicken uh, mix and you get amazing work with that without the uh, matzo flour. Great. <clears throat> That's very, very helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have more questions right. coming in. I do want to turn to Iran. <clears throat> Iran, I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Um, just curious, you know, obviously the COVID pandemic has been challenging for everybody and you guys are now, the numbers are going up of all the people you need to be helping. How would you normally be approaching Pesach? Pesach is, is obviously more than just food. It's about the traditions and making sure people have the right food items, kosher food items, kosher for Passover food items. How would you normally be approaching Pesach and, and how, how are you doing so this year? Thank you, Dan. Thank you, May. It was a privilege for me to cook uh, side by side with you. And thank you, our friends uh, in the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. We really appreciate your support during the year, during COVID. As an, and, and as I said, during a, a regular day and also during emergency. Regards your question, Dan, basically, you know, exactly uh, one year ago, two days from now, one year ago, there was the first quarantine, the first lockdown in Israel after the, the, the first outbreak. And it was two weeks before Pesopher, right like these days. So, uh, we prepared ourselves to, to the Passover last year, uh, which is uh, uh, the holidays are a peak in our activity because people are staying a lot at home. They want to uh, be together with their families, so they need more food. But from that point, I mean, one year from the last Passover to this Passover, we are in the same level of work, struggling uh, uh, to survive with the families, with the, uh, uh, we have, I mean, in our survey, in our research that we've done, 268,000 families deteriorated to poverty, more than 400 uh, uh, families deteriorated to, to financial distress. And we know that before the, uh, I mean, and, and all, during all this year, I mean, we are talking about uh, uh, families who needed to be more at home, like the holidays, but when the uh, education system was closed, when they were in a, a few times, uh, third, we had, we, we had uh, three outbreaks uh, and during uh, uh, the summer vacation, so they needed much more food, but they were not able to buy it. And also 
We have thousands of thousands of families from uh, this side four to seven, uh, middle class who lost their job in the uh, field that were hurt by uh, Corona in culture, tourism and so on. And they were seeking for help for the first time in their lives. So now before Passover, it's another peak of activity. We, as we speak, even in this in these uh, uh, moments till 10 uh, p.m. and uh, and uh, till uh, uh, pass, Passover evening, we are running a food drive campaigns with about 8,000 volunteers all around Israel, uh, asking the uh, uh, the public to donate uh, uh, food, and we also, of course, uh, uh, they 24/7. Uh, collecting food, purchasing food, rescuing food from the biggest uh, uh, companies, the biggest food industry, uh, and, and uh, pack it and deliver it through our infrastructure, through the 180 local NGOs that work with us in our food bank system. Wow. So, of course, you mentioned it, but um, Chef Adoni, the, the food industry and the restaurant industry all over the world was, was crushed by COVID. I'm, you know, many people on the Zoom reached out to us and saying how much they love your restaurants in Israel, here in the States, you know, can you give us an update? What, what, are, you, what are you looking to do next? Israel is slowly coming back to a little bit of normalcy. Can you give us an update of where things are, what restaurants you're going to be able to be opening and where you'll be cooking next? Yes, of course. Yeah. And last week we opened the restaurants um, and, um, you know, when we start move again, a few of the restaurants, because a lot of them, uh, it will take time to open them and the rest uh, unfortunately will not open uh, never again. You know, people are losing the money uh, and the ability to open again the restaurant. And this, that's few of these people around talk about that coming to the circle of Latet organization that needs also to get now a support of food and, and, and other stuff to survive. I open uh, only one restaurant now in Israel, uh, Mali Malo. It's like in uh, one of the hotels in Tel Aviv. But uh, I have also the one in Newark, in New York, that slowly start to come back again. And we have uh, uh, one in Lila in Berlin that's still uh, shut down. And I have another one that I opened a few months ago in Kiev. But a few uh, new uh, things that are coming now during the COVID time. One new one, new business, Porsche one in Dubai, and another one in Singapore. You know, I think the, the world can slowly, slowly start to go back to normal, if you can call it, very slow, but I hope, you know, we, we, we start to see the light in the end of the tunnel. And, and also it's give you a new opportunity that, uh, uh, you know, the COVID create or, or, you know, but I think it's like, it will take years until, not only in Israel, all the culinary scene in the world will go, come back to the normal times and, and to start to create a, a, a new culinary things because I think it took us a few years back and now all of us try, you know, uh, we call it like to lick the woods and, and to start again to create a new things. Thank you, yeah. So we're gonna take a couple more minutes. We'll wrap up in about five, but I do wanna ask a few other questions. Iran, you know, in these boxes that people get, how do you guys decide what goes in? Who do you work with? Do you work with chefs? Do you work with nutritionists? What's, what's the approach to ensure that it's not just any food, it's food to really provide sustenance and to provide meals that uh, Chef Adoni uh, cooked for us? Yeah, so as we know, food insecurity means lack of uh, uh, amount of food, but also quality of food. And we know that uh, uh, the needy families uh, do not purchase, for example, um, really high nutritional food like uh, uh, protein and dairy products uh, and some nutri other nutritional food. This is why we work with nutritionists. And we, for example, we don't put in our boxes uh, flour or sugar or salt because these are ingredients who have no uh, you know, uh, nutritional uh, value and they are cheap. So we assume that the families will buy it uh, by themselves. So we try to put only nutritional things and to, uh, to, have, uh, to have control about this. As I mentioned before, most of our food comes from rescuing for salvaging, so about 75% from the industry, also uh, producers and retailers 
and some food also comes uh, for from uh, from the public. Uh, but this is how we, we try to uh, to do it. So we have the basic food uh, box. On top of it, we purchase also poultry or fish frozen, and we distribute it directly to the local NGOs, and they distribute it to the needies. And on top of it, we also collect food and vegetables and and what we uh, what we survey. So so the box is. Uh, has its own ingredients, but on top of it, we uh, we bring uh, we bring more. Great, thank you. And Chef Adoni, we you you guys mentioned a lot. I mean, we all know for those of us that have been to Israel, traveled to Israel, love Israel. It's it's such a mix of so many different cultures. And you guys mentioned the Moroccan, their Moroccan background in your family. How do you decide when you want to change a recipe or, or look to new cultures? Is it through inspiration of what you eat, meeting people, traveling? What, what's your what's your what's your approach? Because the, you know this idea of Israeli cuisine is sometimes a bigger a bigger conversation than we think it is. Yeah, actually, you know, only in the last decade we can start to create what we call Israeli cuisine because we are an immigrant country. You know, people came after the Holocaust from around the world, and we have so much culture of course, also like culinary cultures that come in to a tiny country. And what I'm doing with a lot of other Israeli chefs that we are creating a new language, what we can call it, the Israeli cuisine after more than 70 years. And we, I think I walk without rules. I'm taking the, um, I'm taking like the authentic uh, dishes from the region and from, of course, the uh, Jewish culture. And I play with them. I play with them without rules. I can use like Japanese spices inside, Chinese spices, uh, uh, take like a uh, modern techniques and you know like I'm doing like for my grandmother crime you know doing like a, a new thing with foam and uh, with powders with jelly with other stuff of course in the end it needs to be tasty uh, but that's the way I'm playing with the food uh, for me you know it's the most important thing it's really that the food will be interesting it will be something else it will surprise you in the palate and and you know and we, because of that I'm not believing the rules you know I'm, I'm cooking authentic uh, local uh, like a uh, region uh, from the from the Middle East and from uh, my mother uh, uh, roots and also of course from uh, all the um, culture the Jewish culture that came to Israel I mix everything together I season that in the way I want and I present it to my customers I think you just came up with the slogan for Israeli cuisine, not following the rules. It sounds very Israeli to me. So, okay. <laughs> so with that, I do want to wrap up. And once again, uh, thank uh, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan, go one, ahead. Of course. Just to, from my point of view, first uh, of all, about being, being together. I mean, you, we, we have the Atlantic who's crossing between us, but I feel we are together thanks to your trust and support in us. And I want you to, to know that also the Israeli public, even though we have uh, the severe economic crisis from, uh, you know, uh, Israel was uh, uh, um, celebrating uh, it, uh, its years and independence. Um, so the Israeli public uh, gave and donated more during this year than, than before, especially uh, through Latet, because people who can understand that we are in a very uh, in emergency time and in times that everybody who can must you know fulfill or or be you know uh, um, demonstrate his mutual responsibility and solidarity to 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 all the all the needy in Israel so we have federations like you and we have uh, uh, we have also foundations and we have the Israeli public so many Israelis are supporting our work Unfortunately, we don't have the Israeli government yet, but we are trying and to challenge and we hope that after the next election that we hope that we won't have more, but also the Israeli government will understand that uh, the, the priorities should, you know, uh, one of the top priorities should be helping uh, uh, the, the needy and reducing poverty, food insecurity, and the gaps in the Israeli society. So um, I, in, um, I wanted also to, to, except from thanking you, to uh, hope that the next trip that uh, you will do not be, won't be virtual and we can host you in Israel uh, in some you know, better days. And till then, uh, I would like also to wish everyone of you uh, 
happy and kosher uh, uh, Passover and, and good health for everybody. Thank you. Amen. I can say for sure, the next time we're going to see both of you, we're all from all of us from LA, we know where our next meal is. We know where our next stop is. So we very much appreciate it. And we definitely look forward to being there in person. I want to thank you both. I want to thank my partners in Israel, IGT Tour Company, World Express Travel for making this happen. And I just want to remind everybody, we, we have those recipes. We'll be sharing the video. So if you didn't quite get everything the first time around or you, you weren't able to get your, your ingredients ready, we'll be providing everything so you can cook again. And please, we'd love to see your pictures. I'm sure Chef Adoni would love to see the pictures of everybody uh, cooking at home. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everybody once again. We'll wrap it up for now, and we see you next time. Chag Sameach. Happy Passover to everybody. Thank you. Happy Passover, everyone. Chag Sameach. Thank you. Bye-bye.